Hello everybody, my name is Jun Han. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do today um, now, simple. We're gonna just do one chapter because uh, this one particular chapter is the one that usually lah, you guys have problem with. Okay, uh, from 5 chapter 1. And also lah, I suppose from 5 chapter 1 is one of the chapter that uh, most of you will, will, will actually cover for your first term exam. First term, mid term, depends lah, right? But definitely lah, it's uh, chapter 1 coming up, right? And the reason I'm doing, decided to do chapter 1 is because uh, I suppose that one chapter is the one that most people blur with because some people find it uh, very hard, very difficult, uh, things like that. And then also uh, another problem is what? Perhaps you will, you when, why these chapters? Because uh, chapter one is, you know, the first chapter you learn after you start school. So usually when you first starting school, uh, first chapter is normally very blur one because why? You will, you will basically have this, you know, half holiday mode half uh, uh school mode slowly start uh. so that's why uh, normally chapter one people got problem with i get questions a lot uh. people always ask like chapter one chapter one chapter one so i decided to do chapter one now mm. and yeah, because chapter one is quite short right now it's short but it's not easy for one simple reason uh, it involves a lot of calculations that some people right find it very difficult or maybe i should say like uh, um the math part is the one that you probably stuck with now you see it's physics ultimately, all right? Anyhow, it's still physics. So that's why uh, at the end of the day, right? Uh, is it really hard for the maths part? Not exactly, because the hard part is all your air maths, uh, maths, uh, those kind of things, right? So usually for physics, right? What I need, very basic one. And and now, I understand you can have a add maths way to solve answer whatsoever. But the thing is, um, what I want to keep it do, I mean, what I, what I want uh, is to keep it easy uh, in a way. So what I need you to know in a way for the physics part, um yes a bit of maths okay a bit of what you learned before yes and when i say learn before it's what a bit more of your uh form three thing actually yep because when we say chapter one uh, force and motion part two what is the thing that you can relate like like in this subtopic right uh what is the thing that you could recall that you learned before okay now four subtopics but actually we could uh summarize them right into three parts the whole chapter one i need to know three things only first it's regarding the pulley and lift part. That one, if I got time, I'll explain that because that one is uh, actually quite straightforward, quite easy to go through, all right? Now, second thing I need to know is uh, the majority part of this chapter, which is what? All the all the resolution of forces, uh, trigger geometry, and then also you have your equilibrium of forces, that kind of. And then after that, the very back part of it is where you have the spring. Yes, now spring calculations are uh, quite straightforward. Um, but of course, say, oh, then does it mean spring won't come out in exam? Does it mean the question for spring easy? Uh, not necessarily lah, because why? Uh, regarding the calculation for spring, now spring got one thing, right? Got potential one. They will come out in essay because you got a factor that can affect your spring. Like what? You know, your, your questions regarding uh, uh, um, factors of spring, they can ask you like, let's say I have a trampoline. How are you going to design the spring so that, you know, they can bounce higher or maybe safer, that kind of thing. Or even like, you know, toys or maybe like I have a toy gun. How do you make the, 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 the bullet maybe to shoot farther, shoot further and stuff like that. Lah. So that's why um, the factors of, of, of spring concerns can be essay. Yep. So that's why everything, lah, uh, we make it three parts, right? What you have here, it's uh, number one, the basic pulley questions whatsoever. And then after that, you have the resolution of forces or the trigonometry part. And finally, right, you have the spring part. Okay, let me adjust my camera a bit. Uh. Sorry about it. Okay, mm. something like that. So let me show you what we're going to go through today. This is what you um, got, right? Now, this notes, right? This, this seminar notes thing, right? I make it this way for you because, you know, I don't want to do halfway, halfway. Lah. So what I covered for you, right? Very simple one. Here, got three things. Got, you know, this material itself, lah, we got three different things. What are those? First, of course, you get this checklist. Okay, later I explain to you like, how the checklist works. And then, right, you have short notes, of course, because you say, oh, I like to furthermore on this part. I not quite remember. Is there anything that can remind me? Now, all these things here, short notes, short notes, short notes, right? Uh, oh, by the way, there's a mistake in the notes. Can you help me to change this? You go to your page number three. Page number three. Okay, page number three. Uh, this one here. This one, they say FY is F cos sine uh, uh, theta, right? Can you help me change this? Uh, don't put cos here. Okay, this one, it's uh, supposed to be sine. All right, a bit of mistake here. Lah. All right, and then this one here also, uh, change it to become cos. 
Yep, this is the one small thing that uh, I typed wrongly, the balik already. Then after that, of course, uh, when we go on some more, you get your questions, right? Now, I try not to put too many questions inside because, especially for a midterm, not going to be just chapter 1, right? Going to be chapter form 4, chapter form 5 as well. So there's no point for me to give you so many questions or so. Lah. If I give you a lot of questions, right, you're probably not going to do so. You say, hey, of all these questions I need, I need to do, you know, I need to do like 20 questions just for one chapter. Not worth it, am I right? I need to spend too many time already. So usually what I do, simple. I basically summarize up already. I give you six questions here. So these six questions, right, it will wrap up your chapter one. Okay, wrap up your chapter one. So all these you get to cover. Exactly, all right. Uh, the answer, you can get it in the seminar uh, page, as in TDC lah. I'll, later that, I'll upload one. All right, the place where you can download the PDF, inside will have it and then if you are my own students then i will also upload uh, in a google classroom nah. yep 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 the answer don't worry about it uh because to be quite frankly i will not be able to do all questions one okay i prepare more for you because i don't want to say like oh today i only teach this part so i only give you this part so it's like fragmented lah. so i give it the whole thing chapter one everything all right uh questions regarding spring uh question regarding uh pulley whatsoever lah. inside all wrap up so you try to do the five six question here all right, it will be very beneficial for your exam. Okay, first term, midterm, both also. Okay, mm. so change uh, page number three, page number three, switch this one. Okay, change to this one. Yep. So we start from the basic thing first. First of all, we got this one here, the checklist. Now, what's with the checklist? For one simple reason, uh, why do I need to do checklist, right? Because um, I get these two situations a lot. Like most people, uh, okay, most students, they will tell me these two things. Number one, is that they will tell me, I, I wanted to study, I want to study, but then right, I don't know how to even start. I open the book, I, I look at it, got 1,000 things I need to study. How? Okay, and then sometimes when you blindly study, uh, no point one. You know things that won't come out, it won't come out. Then you spend your time there for what? Ended up also won't come out, right? So uh, simple, okay, you, you give me those excuses, right? Uh, I wanted to study, but I cannot. I don't know what to study. Never mind, the checklist here. This is a guideline for you, a study guideline in a way to tell you what you need to learn, to tell you what are you supposed to uh, uh, go through, okay? What is a must know? Now, this is not tips, all right? I, and I don't believe tips one. To be quite frankly, tips is very, very risky, my right? If I tell you, oh, you know what? Force emotion two, uh, confirm come out equilibrium one. What if never come out? And you know, like, every school different, my right? Paper. So there won't be exactly one tips that can suit everybody one. So might as well, right? I tell you what are the things that you need to know. So you study accordingly. It's like a guideline for you. Lah. Oh, I need to know this. I need to know this. I need to know this. Okay, I settle for my exam. So what I do, I see every subtopic, I put in this for you. Study guide and also you got your checkbox. Yep. So ultimately what you need to do, right? Check everything here. Yep. And then now this isn't uh, for you one. Okay, this one is I give it to you. So there is really no need to lie about it. What, what does it mean by that? You will be honest to yourself. And then you go through one by one. If you remember, you put a tick there. You understand, you put a tick there. If not, right, you say, hey, this part, I'm uh, not quite sure what is it about. Find out more. Uh, that's why the study guide. Okay, there's really no need to say, oh, can I just, or oh, tomorrow exam. I cannot finish studying everything already. Never mind. I take first, I take first, I take first, I take first. I mean, what's the point of you doing so? You're lying to yourself, uh, right? And then this is not some magical charm, you know. It's not like when you take it, suddenly, boof, knowledge appear in your mind. Hey, that one, I'm not a tutor anymore. I'm a bomo already. Right? It's like a magical charm. You take, knowledge appear. Then, no need to study already, everybody. <laughs> no. Exactly. So that's why, right, we go through this one by one. Can follow? Can I? Eh? Mm. So I will go through, explain to you what are things that you have to remember and then details and everything. But of course, like, first thing first to have the study guide. Okay? Now, second thing, right, uh, second situation. Some students, right, they got study one. They say like, um, I got study, but I always get these feelings. Uh, I'm not sure whether I finish or not. You know, I, I got study, but I don't know whether I got finish study everything or not. Uh, that's one of the bigger concerns, right? One of the biggest concerns, right? Uh, and then it's this, this one factor that, you know, every time you're scared on, like uh, you thought you finished study already. Okay, then uh, suddenly you got this one friend come and ask you, like, you know, half an hour, 30 minutes, 20 minutes before exam, he bring this question to you. He say, hey, how do this? Uh? You look at the question, hey, never seen before. Uh, then you start to go panic. Hey, is it because I never study? Or, or which part did I miss out? Now, number one, your friends get their questions, don't know from where one, you know. Maybe it won't come out, right? And maybe like, oh, there's just some random questions that 
uh, uh, it's just there to scare you that you know they are not in your syllabus then what's the point of you being panicked now worst case like it came out in exam okay how many marks are you gonna lose five three right or not they're not gonna be the whole paper you get it it's not like oh this one i don't know my whole paper gone you see when you panic what happened you're gonna lose more marks because you panic you start forgetting whatever you studied right you start losing more and more marks 5 10 15 20 because you panic so rule number one right this thing is is i mean this thing lah is to prevent the situations one okay you go through the checklist you take everything then you can confident tell yourself okay this chapter i can clear already i move on already to next chapter because i already know what i am i supposed to know uh -huh. so this is to solve one simple problem why because everybody got this one problem is what you don't know what you don't know exactly you don't know what you don't know so this one is to tell you what are you supposed to know and what are things that you don't know okay mm. so this is why we go through now before i continue this checklist right i remind you something first because i need it later so might as well start now lah, okay it's the maths part um now, regarding these chapters, you know lah, a lot of all these uh, calculation, a lot of all this uh, trigo geometry part, right? Uh -huh. Usually is what? You see, uh, from 4, we also got force and motion. You can see, right, this one is part 2. Yeah, so from 4, we got part 1. From 5, we got part 2, right? Uh, there used to be one chapter, you know. There's no part 1, part 2. It's just force and motion. And then it will be in chapter 2 from 4. But people complain, uh, chapter 2, a lot, uh, right? Now, the chapter 2 uh, used to be... 12 subtopics, sub, sub you know, used to be 12 subtopics, means you got 2.1 all the way until 2.12. And you think about it, makes sense what? Uh, what how many subtopics we have for Form 4? Chapter 2, uh, 8. And then how many subtopics we have for Form 5? Chapter 1, 4. So we put them together, right? 12. It's just that now they break them apart. Lah. Okay, they separate them. You got your part 1 and part 2. So easier for you to pick up. Lah. So that's why, right, this one here only got 4 parts. And the majority, majority lah, is regarding the calculations. Lah. You see, form 4 are easy because why? All your force, right, one dimension one. Now, when I say one dimension, meaning what? Uh, for example, you get one uh, either horizontal or either vertical. Like, you know, your force either be like this or they either be like this. Okay? Yep. So, what you do, simple lah. If the force are same directions, you sum them up. If the force are opposite direction, you just minus. Straightforward, right? Now, but for part 2 different, now you start to get 2D. Two dimensions. Like what? For example, uh, say you have a force that going up and then you have a force that go to the right side. You see, when in real life uh, or even now, uh, you know, on your table, there's an eraser, right? You try to do this. Okay, you put your eraser here. You put your eraser on the table and then you start pushing the eraser two way. As in, you push your finger up together right side. So you just imagine uh, your finger like that, your finger like that, and then you start to push them, push them, push them, push them, what happened? Notice, right, your force will become senget, okay, or in a better answers, your force will be diagonal, right? So can you tell me, if I combine these two force, right, what is the directions now we have? If I decided to, two of this, I push together, where is your eraser went to? Where did your eraser went to? Ended up, right, your eraser, uh, sorry, ended up, right, your eraser end up go here on, uh, right now. Ah, what do you call this? What do you call this? This is what we have as the diagonal. All right. Now, literally, this one, right, is what we known as the resultant force. I put an FR there. Lah. Okay. Resultant force or net force. Okay. This one, it's the result of what? Of the two forces combined together. So, these two become this one. Got it? Ah. So, here's the thing. You need to calculate this. How? Simple. Straightforward. Why do I say so? Because, uh, look, you know what are we having here? Not too obvious, right? Never mind. I make it this way. Lah. What about, I put it here. Is it more obvious now? What kind of shape are you getting? What kind of thing is this? What shape are you having? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Triangle not good enough. Better than that. What else we have? What is this? It's a right angle triangle correct right angle triangle right so literally ah uh, now why do i say easy because well if i tell you how much here how much here could you find this or not that's why you learn the maths right uh what is the what is the maths theory that we used say for example if i tell you this here is five newton here it's uh six newton what happened how do you calculate the fr how do you calculate the, the this one here your pythagoras theorem remember 
Pythagoras theorem, right or not? So end up, what do you do? Your resultant force, you will do this, right or not? Square root, okay, square root, 5 square plus 6 square. And then after that, answer comes in, right? Uh -huh. Now, this is what you learn in Form 3, isn't it? Yes? So that's why the knowledge we need for maths, okay, we don't have to go crazy one. We just go for the basic one we'll do. Okay, that's the first thing I want you to know. Huh? Trigo geometry, step one, Pythagoras theorem. And of course, when I say trigo geometry, do we stop here? Beside this, what else do you know? Now, right angle, triangle. Sometimes, what else can you do as well? Think about trigo geometry. Beside your Pythagoras theorem, what else do you learn? Beside Pythagoras theorem, what else do you learn? Exactly, you know, the angle thing and then the sine thing, cos thing, tangent, right? Uh, speaking of this, I'll remind you also, uh, in, because we need it later. Uh. Now, regarding this sine, cos, tangent, do you remember how do we solve them one by one? Uh, first thing first, how do you calculate sine? Sine formula is what? I suppose everybody learned before, right? You know, the so ka toa thing. Yep, uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos, what did we get for, for cos? Adjacent over hypotenuse and like uh, finally tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, simple. Uh, one more thing, perhaps lah. Okay, in case lah, they go weird lah. Uh, can anyone tell me right when I take sine divided by cos, what do I get? When I take sine divided by cos, what do I get? Sine over cos equals to what? Well, simple lah. Sine you got three things. You got three person only, my right? Sine, cos, and tangent. So if I take sine over cos, what do we get? You end up getting, you end up getting tangent correct. Okay. Hmm. Now, if you say you don't know, never mind. I show you lah. Okay. You know why the tangent or not? You look at the formulas. What is sine? Opposite over hypotenuse. What is cos? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Right. So when you divide them, uh, little value, what are you doing? You take opposite over hypotenuse, then you divide adjacent over hypotenuse. Agree? Yep. And of course, you know maths, all right? When you take opposite over hypotenuse, fractions divide by another fractions ended up become what? It will become fractions multiplied by fractions. Make sense? And obviously what happened next? The H can cancel off my right. So ultimately, what are you getting? Opposite over adjacent is the formula for what? Opposite over adjacent is the formula for tangent. That is the idea of it. So far so good? Can. Can follow, ah? Huh? This one is just the basic first because I want to get you started with all the basic re recap. Then we can go smoothly behind. All right, everybody. Okay, not nah. All good. Good, good, good. Ah, uh, okay, number one. You see, you can send me a direct message one, okay? You don't have to worry. say, hey, what if my answer is wrong? You're not alone, okay? And what if my question is too dumb, right? You're not alone, right? And, and to be quite frankly, there's no answer too, there's no answer too dumb. There's no question too dumb for me. Because I want everybody to, to, make, to, to make progress. I mean, since you came for this seminar, make the best out of it, lah, right? Because I, do, I don't leave you behind, like, you just blur, not knowing what happened. That was the point. You get it? So that's why, right, uh, I would recommend you follow together. You have questions, you can ask. We all good? Can, can, can. Now, so after the basic, uh, then we start into this, uh, one by one. First thing first. When we say resultant force is the basic toughest, okay? Now, number one, of course, definition for resultant force, that force, this one you know, okay? Definitions, uh, you can find in your notes, you can find in your books as well. Definition, I'll leave it to you. I'm telling you, definition sure come out one every time I exam, okay? Whether you want to memorize or not, your choice. But every time, right, for definitions, usually, okay, usually, uh, five questions. Normally, on average, it's five. Five questions, five marks. So you decide uh, whether this five marks is important for you or not. If you want to memorize, five marks. If you don't memorize, five marks gone. Okay? But of course, you throw away five marks, you can you can try to get it back from elsewhere. So usually I don't I don't force people to memorize definition one because I feel too much time to invest. Now, but on a crazy day, uh, I'm telling you, sometimes uh, worst uh I I seen before uh, there was this one paper came out, uh, eight questions of definition. Literally your paper two, right? You will have like you know uh the paper two the 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 first eight questions every question the question number one they ask for definition i mean they could they could that's why i say on average five definition they go crazy okay i can go up to about eight but that's why lah you you see for yourself lah okay you want to memorize or not your choice okay now next one right is what you need to know calculations for uh, uh net force resultant force but then you see here right they say two dimension 
You know what means by two two dimensions, right? Okay, literally, right? This one is the basic one. As in, your force, ah, now two dimension means either this one left, right, or up, down. Not combined yet, ah. Left, right, up, down. And of course, I said before, lah, right? If it's only left, right, horizontal, easy. Because why? Now your two dimension idea is what you either get two situations only, my right? If the force having the same directions, same, ah, what do you do? Ah, think about it. If you got two force acting the same directions, what do we do with the force? Yep, you sum them up. Now, what happens if I get force acting in opposite directions? What do you do? Ah, uh, same sum opposite. What do we do? Come, everybody answer. Ah, uh, come, come, come. I guess when through the answer, I know lah whether you're learning or not, whether you're following up or not. Yep, minus exactly. Straightforward. Shouldn't be big problems, ah. Huh? Shouldn't be big problems. Okay. Moving on. Now, this one is the effect of resultant force. Perhaps you say, hey, what is this effecting? Uh, there's one thing I want to emphasize because a lot of people actually don't know one. What are those leh, over here? Every time, right, you have three situations. I mean, actually two. Lah. Number one is when your force is zero. Number two is when your force is not zero. Okay, but then, right, you pay attention here. You realize this one force XA is equal zero. And then down here, force also equals zero. But I want you to understand, when your force equal to zero, right, you actually got two results. Maybe can be this. Maybe can be this. Yep. Now, the first one is not a big problem. Everybody will, will, will think about this. You see, when we have force, net force zero, then your stationary, okay, your object not moving. Obviously, right, your force is zero, not moving, right? Now, the second thing is people will confuse. Say, hey, what about this? Huh? When your force equals zero, right, the object will be moving, but they move with constant velocity. You're probably thinking, hey, but there's no force also, how the person move? Huh? That's why. The bad is in mind, huh? can you tell me what's the formula for force? The most basic one, when I say F equals to what? What's the formula? This one is what you learn in form 4, huh? right? F equals to? F equals to what? Yep, MA, correct. Now, bad is in mind, look here. When you got F, right, you know what happened or not? You're supposed to have A. When you got F, right, you're supposed to have A. Okay, you're not supposed to, now the formula is not F equals MV, it's F equals MA. Got force, uh, must accelerate one, you understand? Ah, so here's the thing, if your force zero, you substitute and see, this one zero, what do you get for A? If your force is zero, what do we get for A? Zero lah, right? But that is in mind, when I say A equals zero, right, does it mean force never move? What is the, the translation? A zero is what? I know accelerations. But does it mean I must be not moving or not? Now, of course, when you don't move, your acceleration is zero, right? But bear this in mind, when you constant velocity, are you having any accelerations? Zero as well, right or not? Ah, so that's why better, this one especially. The second one is the thing that normally people confuse. And then almost every year, doing how? Yes. How to ask, ah? Now, the situation is going to be like this. They give you a box, all right? Then they say, right, uh, I push the box with a force of 10 Newton. Mm. Then... The box moves to the right side with a constant velocity. Now, this is a problem because why? Every time, right, in exam, uh, you look for this kind of keywords. Ah, uh, that's the trick part. Okay, that's the, that's the trick. You look for this magic word. Whenever you notice the question say, the box moves with a constant velocity of 5, constant velocity of 10, constant velocity of 2. Now, then you tell yourself, something is fishy. Okay, because why? When there is force, you're not supposed to constant. You're supposed to accelerate. Understand? Why? Because constant velocity, a equals zero. And, and smart guess, you know why this thing will happen? When you pushed it, yet they are not accelerating. Simple, step by step, okay? You try to think this way, huh? when your A is zero, when your A is zero, what is your force? Ah, come, substitute this and see. When your A is zero, what do you get for F? Zero, right or not? Then here's a problem. The question say got force, but then when you calculate got no force. Why is that so? Now, that will go back to one simple trick here. I mean, reminder lah. Do you know what does the F stands for? What does this F stands for? When I ask like that, you know lah, I'm not asking for just force lah. To be more exact, what kind of force is this? What kind of force are we getting? Force not good. Yes, exactly. The F here actually, right, stands for net force. Stands for resultant force. The F here stands for net force. Stands for resultant force. You follow? Exactly. So what means by that? Simple. When your force is 
So when your A is zero, your net force is zero. And smart guess lah, since you applied force, but calculated answer zero, means what? This one, gone. And then smart guess, normally what are the reason that your force will be disappeared? Normally what are the reason your force get cancelled off? Usually, usually, what are the situation? Yes, what do we have on the floor? What do we have on the floor? Yeah, exactly, that's a frictions acting on the object. So whenever you notice, uh, whenever the question says the object is moving with constant velocity, straight away you translate this means what? The object having frictions. And how much do you think it is? This one only calculate one. You see, you apply 10, but result is zero. How do you go from 10 to zero? Ah, how to cancel off 10 Newton? Have another force, also 10 Newton, but then they go opposite. They cancel off, there you go. 10, 10, cancel off, zero. Okay, so this is the typical one thing that I need to remind you. Lah. Every time exam come on, okay, number two reason. Number two, so in exam, right, pay attention for this word. Pay attention for this word. They say constant velocity means you are having frictions. And usually constant velocity meaning what? Your friction equals to your force applied. That's why they cancel off. Acceleration zero, net force zero. Okay? Mm. And of course, third point, not a big issue, lah, right? When your F is not A, sorry, not zero, obviously you're having accelerations. Lah. Because by right, got force should have accelerations. Okay? Now, up to this part, questions. We good? Okay, uh, we leave no person behind. Got a question you can ask. Alright? Can I go on? Everybody? Next. Now, this one, perhaps some people are not so familiar with this. You know what means by free body diagram, actually? Have you seen this word before? Have you seen this phrase before? Not quite, right? Ah, you know what's free body diagram? Now, the, the name looks very scientific one. Okay? The, the name looks very scary one. But let me tell you what. When we say free body diagram, simple. It means, right, you draw a diagram to show all the forces acting on them. Okay, you draw a diagram to show all the forces acting on them. And normally when we say object, right, you just draw a box to represent. Don't care lah, whether you're getting like, uh, whether a ball, whether a basketball, whether a car, whether a bicycle or even a person. Lah. Whenever we say free body diagram, we do it this way. I do short form for you. Ah. Okay, free body diagram, FBD lah, okay. Now whenever we say this free body diagram thing, right, simple. You draw a box to represent it. Okay, I say I got this pencil box, I apply force on it, free body diagram, draw this. I got this basketball, free body diagram, draw this. I got this uh, car, free body diagram, draw this. Understood? Aha, uh -huh, exactly. But one simple rule you follow lah. Every force acting on the object, right? Now, every time we draw free body diagrams, uh, every time uh, we draw free body diagrams, we start the force from the middle. We start from the middle point and then bruh, we go up. Exactly. Now how? How? Simple. Look. Let's say just now, you see? Let's say we take this for example. There's a 10 Newton force acting on the box, right? There's a 10 Newton force pushing it, right? So now, right, I'm not going to put the force over here anymore. Instead, right, where do I put it? I will put it over here. See, from the middle point, you owe out. You go out. Get it? Ah, What else? Can you have, um, well, everything. Uh, if I have a force going to the left side, I do this. If I have a force going to, to, to upwards, I do this. If I have a force that go downwards, I do this. So literally, right, every force, lah, whenever we draw free body diagrams, we just put all the forces. Okay, again, I repeat, start from the middle point, we go outside. Do you understand? Okay, but there's one thing I want to emphasize. It's this one here. What if there's a friction acting on this box? Right? What if there's a friction acting on this object? Where do we draw the frictions? Now, this one very important because why? Uh, start thinking about it. Lah. Where do you get the frictions? Like, where do we get frictions? Now, for example, you see there's a wall here, right? There's a wall here, right? Okay, now if I put my hand here and then I start doing this, do I have any frictions? Do I experience any frictions by the wall? Not quite, right? So how to make sure I can experience the friction on this? You must touch it, right? And then you start rubbing, 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 rubbing. Uh, then you got frictions. Make sense? Exactly. So where is frictions? How do we get frictions? Friction only occurs when you are touching a surface. Friction only occurs when you're rubbing on a surface. So next time, right? If lah, 
they ever ask for frictions or in a diagram there is frictions one where must you draw now this one some teacher very particular one you draw elsewhere they're not going to give you marks at all they don't even consider your answer at all where should you draw it you draw it over here between the object and the surface and then you label this as the frictional force do you understand now this is another thing that perhaps uh, people make mistake a lot lah, so i remind a bit okay uh, look ah, uh, when you draw your frictions over here and that's it lah if you decide to draw friction over here that's it no marks for you you cannot draw it from the uh from the center go on only frictions you do it on the surface do you understand uh, so that's the trick uh, regarding your free body diagram i mean that is exactly how you draw a free body are we good any questions anybody got question with this now so clear now mm. so in case uh, they ever ask that is the meaning of free body diagram next okay now You tell me okay, then I move on. Uh, you never tell me okay, then I, I, I I'll, I'll wait for you one, okay? Exactly. If I'm going too fast, let me know. To be quite frankly, la, you you pay more attention listening and responding to me. Yes, because this one only copy one. That's not a copy, take a screenshot. La. Right? Make use of technology. Later, you want to put all your color, you know, all your highlighter, all your rainbow color pen. You do it later. Okay, take a small screenshot. We can move on. Okay? Uh, then, uh, Next thing, right? This one you need to solve. That's why we start doing calculations, ah. All right. Normally, now the main thing that I pay attention to is this elevator and pulley. Normally, they one set one. This one is the lift and pulley questions. Yep. Um, not exactly a very very big part, ah. So later, lah. If I got time, uh, we will go through. Okay. But we put we put the main main focus over here. These two point here. I mean, this is the very very big part, ah. The majority of it where they ask you a lot, they where they carry a lot of marks in exam, one. Okay. So this one later. Now this one easy law, right? Typical one when you move in a horizontal. Okay, when you move in a horizontal vertical, just now I said lah. Alright, left right minus left left plus ah, that kind. And then after that, these two, right? Elevator and pulley afterwards. But of course, ah, you can also read through a bit yourself as well. Yep. So that's why you see, after I go through like that, you start thinking, lah, uh, did I remember this or not? Do I know what the teacher is talking about? Or do I remember what I have learned? If you say yes, you put a tick, you put a tick, you put a tick. Uh, so from there, we broop, go on all the way. Okay? We good. Mm. Furthermore, eh? now then, this is when the majority thing here. These two, we wrap up together. We, we do it together. Now, why? Normally, for resolution of forces, right? You know, when you got like two components, like two forces combined together, they go diagonal one. Ah, so normally, we got two situations. Number one is those push and pull questions with angle. Later, we go through. Second situation is the inclined plane, inclined plane questions. Like, you know, a kid uh, uh, playing a slide, where you have a slope, when you push the, 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 your, your, your goods, your stock, whatever, up and down, that kind of questions. Where they involve lah, all the sine cost tangent thing. Uh, then after that, we have the equilibrium questions. Then we have the equilibrium questions. Can calculate, can draw in. Now, regarding these chapters, right, I will you. If I were you, right, I'll bring, I'll bring protractor or compass also. Protractor and compass, both lah. Yes, because uh, maybe lah. Whenever you see, they say scale diagram lah. Okay, they say draw a scale diagram. Whenever you see this ah, that means they want you to draw it properly. Like literally, you tell them 1 cm is how many newton. And then someone need to use protractor to measure angle one. Yes, only when they say scale diagram, you do it. Normally, no need. Normally, just aga aga draw only. Okay, the proper shape, that will do. Okay, and then, but to be quite frankly, la, drawing, uh, not, to be quite frankly, la, okay, not, drawing is not exactly a very popular question because um, they have too many marks, they have to give it to you. Now, if you say drawing, right, here's the thing, they have to give you about five marks or at least la, three, but then it's only drawing. So the teacher will feel like, hey, like that, I give this student three marks, not worth it. La. So that's why usually they like to ask you to do calculation more often. Ah, so that's the idea. Okay, so we go through these two in depth and then we furthermore. After that, finally, we got this elastic law. I remind you nicely lah, okay? You can read through a bit also. Now, what I want you to do ah, short notes here, I don't, I, I leave it to you. You can read through, read through, read through. Okay, everything remind you. Some of the drawing, in case I got no time, I show you as well. Now, you go to your notes, page number six. You're supposed to see a blank page one. Page number six. You got a bank page, right? No worry, it's like that one. Someone always say, hey, is it because like you didn't you forget to print something on it? Nope. This one is memang there 
okay, empty page ma, for you to write all your short notes, all your whatever, la, the technique, the small skills I teach you. Okay, now we further on, I teach you how to do all the sine cost tangent questions. Because right, it's the same concept. Once you learn this trick right, it applies to every type of questions you have. Inclined questions, equilibrium questions, all same. Mm, so why not, right? Now, uh, first thing, remember just now I said, uh, we start from the easiest one first, lah. like how? We, I give you two force, horizontal and vertical, and then you combine them. You make it a resultant for me. For example, let's say, if I have a force going up, and I have a force going to the right side, what's going to happen? Uh, two of these, okay? I put this one Fy, this one Fx, lah. y axis, x axis, my right? Can put any number one. You want to put one and two also can. Now, these two, if I combine, okay, two of them push together, what is your result? Okay, two of these, if I combine them, what do you get? If I combine them, two of them combined together, what is the answer? Uh, diagonal, yes, like like what directions? What directions, the diagonal? Diagonal where? Lah? Exactly, up right, okay, up right, this way, okay, this way. I mean, makes sense, right? You got up and right, ma. combine, up right, long. okay? So this one here, ah, it's the resultant. So what happened is basically, you got two force, Two of them resultant become this one. Combine become this one. Understand? Mm. How do we calculate this? Simple, straightforward. Now, I show you la, more obvious one. La. You see, if I bring this one over, we said just now, right? How do we calculate FR? Simple. Let's say if I tell you here 3 Newton, here 4 Newton, what do we get for FR? FR equals to what? Square root 3 square plus. 4 square, how much? This one is the easiest number I can give you already, lah. Right? 3 square, 4 square, square root. What do we get? What do we get? Yep, 5 Newton. There we go. Follow? Mm. So, this is the first thing I want you to know. Straightforward, easy. But then, right, here's the thing. Don't stop here, you know. This is the one problem you guys have, huh? Yeah, you got answer. Hey, very happy. I got answer already. We are not done yet. Why? Anybody? We are not done yet. Why? What is missing out? I'll give you a hint. Nah. Force, right? It's a vector or a scalar? Force. Force. It's a vector or scalar? Vector, correct. What means by vector? What means by vector? Vector means it has directions. And, and now, how do you show directions? This one, uh, you say left also not correct, up also not correct. They are like half, half, alright. Exactly. Angle. Correct. Angle. How do you show directions when you are having this diagonal force? You calculate the angle. So, uh, uh, you're supposed to calculate two things. Whenever they give you two of this, you're supposed to calculate two things. Do not just stop at getting this. You got one more thing you're supposed to get. It's over here. Theta. This one you need to get. Do you understand? Ah. Now, how do we calculate the angle? I think, again, uh, a bit of a maths as well, am I right? Look, I bring this over. Now, this is a triangle, yes? What do you call this? What do you call the side facing the angle? Ah, come, your, your, your math's ready. Your trigger geometry. What do you call the side facing the angle? Your triangle. Opposite, correct. Opposite. Now here, your FY, it's opposite. So I bring it back also. This one, I put here, opposite. Okay? Now what do you call the side next to the angle? Next to the angle. Yep, adjacent, correct. And then what do you call this guy? The resultant, the longest one. The, the one you calculate using Pythagoras theorem. Yeah, exactly, hypotenuse. But usually we don't use hypotenuse one. Because hypotenuse is your own answers. Ma. So try to use value given by the question. Nothing wrong, you want to use also can. But usually la, we take this one and this one. And then what do we have? Opposite, adjacent. O, A. What reminds you? Yep. So we got tangent equals to opposite over adjacent. You want theta, ma, right? So what do you do? Tangent inverse. Opposite is... Uh, 3 given by the questions, adjacent is 4 given by the questions. What do we get? Tangent inverse 3 over 4. Uh, this one I need you calculate. Come, come, come. Find the answer for me. Press calculator, please. What do we get? Uh, 36 point. 36 point. 87 degree. Correct. We good? 
Mm. Now, we're not done yet. Uh. Don't just say, oh, I got answer already. No, no, you do not have it. You found the answer already. You must write here one. So your final answer should be what? Your force resultant is what? 5 Newton. Okay, 5 Newton. And then what happened? 36.87 degree to the horizontal. Now, here's the questions. When I say horizontal means where? Horizontal. Y or X axis? Exactly. You know why is it called to the horizontal or not? You see, this is your resultant. Ah. And then you're trying to measure, measure the angle here, right? This is the X axis, right? So, from here, I go to the horizontal line. Yep. Of course, you say, hey, can I calculate angle here? Yes, you could. Then, if you calculate angle here, right, then this will become to the vertical. Okay? To the horizontal and then to the vertical. You follow? To the horizontal, to the vertical. There you go. So that's why, right, ultimately, you're supposed to find two things. Alright, I give you Fy, Fx. You must tell me, number one, the resultant force. Number two, the angle. This is the one thing that often people forgot about it. Because you get too excited once you found the answers. Nope, you have to also find the theta. Are we good? Questions? Anything to ask before I go on? Everybody... Okay or not? Can again move on some more. All right, next. Now, simple math, all right. If I give you A, you tell me B. So what if I tell you I give you B, you tell me A. So this one to be quite friendly lah, too simple already lah. Okay, how to make it harder for you? Now I tell you, you see this. Just now I give you these two. Okay, I want you to tell me this one. So what I do now? I tell you. Now I tell you this one. Okay, I tell you FR is how much literally. Then you tell me the Fy, Fx. Okay? But of course, the question will not just give you a uh, resultant. Because you cannot get answers one. Right now, like, you know, take a while guess. Uh, no. La. You see, what did I ask just now? I give you Fy, Fx. Okay? You have to uh, find out this one and also theta. What? Right now. So if I reverse, I want Fy, Fx. I must give you Fr and theta. You get it? Uh, so angle will be provided. No need to worry. But here's the thing. Uh, Whenever you see diagonal force, what do you say diagonal? Diagonal is this. Diagonal is like this. Diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. Rule number one. Whenever you see a diagonal force, right? First thing you do, resolve. Exactly. Don't, you cannot calculate diagonal force here, man. So step one you do is what? Always remember, you resolve them. What means by resolve? Simple. Okay. Uh, now, the idea of resolve, uh, you think about this. Uh, how do you get this at the first place? How do you have this FR? It was actually two person combined together, right? The Fy, Fx, you combine together, become Fr, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So the idea a bit similar to what? You think about it this way, lah. Have you seen those like chopstick that um they will give it they, they will give you in the Japanese restaurant? The wooden chopstick, the one time use one, they give you in a Japanese restaurant. And then normally no, uh, normally you have to you have to like open up yourself one. They stick together one. See that before? Use that before? And then you have to like basically tear them apart like pyak, both. Ah, same logic here. You just imagine, right? Now you have a pair of chopsticks. Okay? You have the Japanese chopstick like that. And then they stick together. So what you want to do? You need to tear open this chopstick. So one of these, ah, one pair of this, and then what you do? You pyak. You resolve them. You open them back to the original forces. Now, how do you have a force that is going this way? Just now I say, alright, how do we have this as first place? Because it was combination of Fy, Fx, right? Because it was a combination of up and right. That's why we get up right. Make sense? Uh, so when we resolve, we try to turn them back to the original directions. So upright means what? I have a force going up. Okay, when we tear this thing open, right? We got chop sigma, right? One going up, one going to the right side. You follow? Uh, so this is the idea of resolve. From one pair become two. Understand? Now, I test you again, uh, whether you understand or not. Uh, what if I get a force doing this? Now, if you resolve, what directions do you get? If you open this, what directions do you get? What directions do you get? You get a down and... You get a down and right, correct. Okay, one more time. What about this one here? If I get this, means what? I get a down and left, correct. So that means by resolve, you understand? Ah, uh, now... The angle will be provided. Uh, you say, hey, how do you get this angle suddenly? Uh, how do you get this 30 degrees? It will be provided. I already said, I want you calculate. I give you these two. You have to calculate these two. So now, right, I give you these two. You calculate these two. 
Now, the Fy, Fx thing to be quite friendly. Lah. You want to put F1, F2 also can, lah. doesn't matter. Fy, Fx, Y axis, X axis, all right. So now the question is, how do we calculate? Now, I give you the shortcut straight away because um, we're not going to spend too many time doing all the detail, lah. no point. Lah. And then I suppose some of you got basic already one because you somehow listen a bit one, just are not too clear. Or never mind, even without the basic, I can use the shortcut also. See? I want you to find out the value for Fy, Fx, right? Uh, and then you see, this is obviously a trigger geometry one. That means you have to do all the sine cos tangent thing. Uh. Uh, I teach you a simple trick. You just have to decide when to use sine and when to use cos, then you go to go already on. Okay, when you do sine, when you do cos, then you go to go already on. What means by that? Simple. Um, now, some people got this bad uh, uh, understanding. Uh. They will tell me that, oh, I know, every time horizontal, I do sine. Vertical, I do cos. Uh, this dangerous. This is very dangerous. Not necessarily true. Okay, I teach you one better one. Okay, now what you do, right? You look for the angle. You see, I got Fy, I got Fx. Do you realize it's always like that? One side, they will give you the angle and one side, they leave it blank. You see, for Fy side, is there any angle provided here? Is there any angle provided here? Nope, right? Of course, I know you can calculate. You say, hey, I can find myself. Yes, you do, but we are not trying to calculate angle. All right, I'm just asking you, do we have any angle provided? Nope. Good. Now, what about this one here? Is there any angle provided? Yes. Now, so it's always like that. Got angle, no angle. Got angle, no angle, right? Now, simple, ah. Huh? Your trick, you look here. Whenever there is angle provided, there is angle provided, you use cost. Whenever there's no angle provided, you do sign. That's it, straightforward. Okay, it works every single time. Got angle cost, no angle sign. Got angle cost, no angle sign. Okay, uh -huh. so for Fy, that being said, right, if I if I put the angle here, if I see it here is 30 degrees, then your Fy become cost ready. Ah, so with angle cost. Now, of course, you say, hey, can I calculate the angle here? Because I know how much here, right or not, 30 degrees, this one must be 60, right? Now, if you go and calculate, then can. Both also become what? Got angle, got angle. So here cost 30, here cost 60. But too much effort lah. So what we do? I just look at this. Got angle, no angle. If there isn't any angle, I just tell myself I do sign. Okay? Uh, so Fy, we use sign because no angle. Fx, we use cost because got angle. Are you following? But of course, you know lah, your exam not going to be just, you know, uh, FY equals sign one ma. You, must, you have to calculate, you have to tell me the whole thing one, right? So now it's fill in the blank time. What sign what? What cost what? Now, first thing first, what do you put behind? Max, whatever, sign what? Cost what? Tangent what? Every time lah, whatever behind your sign cost tangent must be? Uh -uh, here. Whatever behind your sine cos tangent must be angle, correct. So over here, right, you put your theta. What's your angle? See, provided 30 degrees. Copy only, uh, right? No need to calculate one. Sine also 30 degrees, cos also 30. Some of you say, hey, the sine shouldn't be 60, man. I already said, no need to calculate. Once you go and calculate 60, right, then it becomes cos ready. So now you're going to have sine 30, cancel off, you start doing cos 60. I mean, you could, you could, but be because why? They are saying. Yep, you try and press calculator. Uh, how much is sine 30? How much is sine 30? Sine 30, how much? Mm, 0 0.5, correct. You press calculator, cost 60. How much do we get for cost 60? Exactly, same, right? Uh, so this is the reason why we don't have to calculate the angle the other side. You just have to decide sine and cost. Answer same one. Now then, next question, what do you put in front? Simple. You answer me one question, huh? how do you get Fy, Fx at the first place? How do you get Fy, Fx at the first place? Remember just now I said, right, you know the chopstick theory, the chopstick idea? It was this chopstick you open up two, right? It was this and then we tear them open, become two, right? So imagine this way, this is the father. We tear the father into half. So one children, one children. Okay, so where do the children come from? From father. You get it? And of course, you know, your name, you follow your father name on my... Ah, so now, right, your father name is called 10 Newton. So what is your name? You put your father name in front of... Exactly. So now it's going to be what? Father, sign 30. What do you put this one? Father, cost 30. 
Use this trick, apply to every of the question. When you base it good, we move smoother. Understand? Okay, uh? so every time, right, what you do? Step one, you resolve. After that, right, you look for the angle. Got angle, you do cos. No angle, you do sine. Right? FY, no angle, sine. FX, got angle, cos. Every time your format, father, sine, angle. Father, cos, angle. The name of father put in front, the angle put behind. Are we clear about this too? Okay? Mm. So this is the basic part. Once you get it clear, we can go into deeper. The detail, lah, the one that come out in the exam. Okay or not? Okay or not? Everybody? Can. Mm. Then let me tell you how we move on from here. Like, you know, with these skills, seem simple. Apply into what? Got two application. Alright? This kind of sine cost engine thing, ah, got two application. First, they will ask you about inclined plane questions. You know what means by inclined plane? Inclined plane means, right, uh, you have a slope or whatever. Lah. Inclined means slanted. Uh, example, lah. let's say now I have a slide, okay, for kids to play one, a slide like that. And then a 90 degree slide. So what do you do? Uh, you put a baby here. I'm not baby, sorry. Baby cannot play slide. Ah. We put a kid here. Lah. So imagine this is the kid playing the slide. Any kid too long already. Uh, kid. Okay, kid playing slide. Of course, they're happy, lah, right? Kid happy. Mm. Okay. Now, question number one. If you are the if you are the kids, okay, let's say you are the kids, what's gonna happen? If you if you if you lie down on the slides, what is going to happen? Think. What is going to happen? Slide down, correct. What directions? What directions? Obviously you follow, right? Uh-huh. You of course you follow the direction of the slide on, huh? That can you that can you slide here like, like this right? That's not called slide already. They want to fall down. Uh, it's a slide, so you slide all the way down, right? Now the question is, what is the reason that the kid slide down? Why the kid will slide down? Because got force. No, no, no. Okay, then the question comes. Where does the force come from? Where do the force come from? Ah, that's the word we're looking for. Gravity. Uh, gravity not good enough. Better than that. Gravity gives you what kind of force? Gravity gives you what kind of force? Gravitational force, correct. Uh, better than that? You know, what is another shorter word for gravitational force? Easier word for gravitational force? Weight, correct. Answer. Now next time, uh, whenever they ask you what is the name of force produced by gravity, you can just say weight, don't you know? You don't have to go through such a trouble, gravitational force. It's not wrong, but why you want to write two words when you can just write weight, a short one word, right? Uh, so weight is gravitational force. But the problem is, uh, weight going these directions. Are we having weight going this way? No, right? Now weight, they don't care about you one. Every time, weight, what directions? Exactly, weight, right? Where do they go? They always go down. They don't care whether you are on a slide, you are on whatever. Lah. Your weight, confirm, confirm. Go where? Exactly, downwards, right? Downward. Oh, speaking of that, do you remember? How do you calculate weight? How do you calculate weight? W equals to? Mg, correct. So next time, uh, they give you the mass, you multiply gravity. Lah. Okay, uh, let's say your mass is 10 kg, multiply 9.81, you get your weight. 20 kg, multiply 9.81, you follow? So here's the thing, we say the boy slide down because of the weight. But the problem is what? You notice the direction is not the same? So they are related, but you cannot say, oh, we just put the weight here. Doesn't make sense, right? Uh -huh. And then you know why you cannot use the weight value straight away? Your boy is going this way, slanting. Okay, your boy is going this way, slanting along the slides, and then your weight is going this way. Can you say weight equals to this? Can you say weight is the main reason causing this? Of course cannot, lah, right? Now, if you say yes, uh, it's like what? Uh, now, for example, lah, you have a... Okay, let's say lah, now you're sitting on a chair, right? Okay, you're sitting on a chair, right? Your weight acting down, yes? Your butt sits on the chair, your weight acts on the chair, yes? Now, your, your, your chair, does it go forward now? When your weight acting down, do your chair go forward? 
or do your chair go back? Does it go back and forth? Hey, if your chair does that, right, I strongly suggest you uh, don't use the chair anymore. That one is not weight, you know, that one something else. Uh. Imagine you sit down, the chair start moving. Hey, that one, the chair a bit scary, uh. right? <laughs> exactly. Where got chair like that one? You sit down, they start moving forward, they start moving back. Okay, that one depends on what religion you go to. Lah, okay, you bring to your church, you bring to your temple, whatever, you tell them, hey, this chair move themselves one. Uh, I give it to you, lah. I don't want to bring home already. You want to burn, you burn. Okay? No, no, no. Your chair got wheel, but you need to push it, ah. You gotta push it back and forth to go back and forth, my right? Like when you sit down, they start sliding forward. They start drifting themselves. Wow, what kind of high-tech chair you have? And I doubt, lah. That one is not high-tech chair, lah. That one is highly processed chair, lah, okay? Now, that's why, ah. You see, they are related. So what happened, eh? Simple. The trick is this way, ah. Now, uh, this one, they come from here. Okay, this force is produced by weight, but they're not equal. It's like, you know, your father, sorry, your mother or your father, lah, okay, produce you. But you cannot say you equals to your father. Ma. Make sense? So this is the father. And then, again, father, what happened? Poof, we open two. Okay, chopstick, ah, open two, one pair always, right? So how to remember? You remember this, 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 this name here. Okay, it's called inclined plane. Okay, so what you do, right? You remember this P for plane. Every time when we have an inclined plane, what happens? The weight will break down. It will be resolved into 2P. It will be resolved into 2P. What are the 2P we have? Now, every time, right, they will resolve into 2P. Ah. Now, listen, your weight break down, become 2P. What means by that? Now, your weight will break down, become 2P. What means by 2P? 1P stands for parallel. 1P stands for perpendicular. Okay, parallel and perpendicular. Okay, now, this one, parallel. Another one what we have, you will have another force that is doing this. Okay, and you know parallel, perpendicular to what, right? Parallel to your plane. Parallel to your plane. That's why I say plane 2P. Parallel to the plane and also perpendicular to the plane. Understood? Uh, so again, uh, now right, your father, again, we open up the father, become two kids. These two are the children for the father. Okay, this is part of the weight. This is another part of the weight. That's why when you, when you look in textbook, right, they will say parallel component. What means by component? Component means, component means part. So these two, right, they actually also tear out from father one. Okay, component, component. Understood? Yep. So I make it easy for you. Like I call this F1, I call this F2. So F1, it's the parallel component. F2, it's the perpendicular component. Okay, so I call this as parallel. Then I call this as perpendicular component. So now your father become two kids. We good? Well, notice the same thing also, right? We tie them open. So what else I do I need to give you? I give you the father already. Again, every time we do calculations, how? Every time we do calculation, how? Must have father and anger, right? Ah, they will also give you the anger, but then they give it in a very subtle way. Means what? They don't tell you anger straight away. Instead, right, they tell you here. They tell you the slope, ah. For example, ah, the slope here, uh, 30 degrees. Then you say, hey, you give me the anger here for what? I want the angle here or here only I can calculate, right? Now, you got angle here, you will be able to find the angle over here as well. Uh -huh. Now, a bit of math. Huh? If the angle here 30 degrees, can you tell me, right, what is the angle over here? This one 30, this one is? Yep, it will also be 30. Okay, it will also be 30. You know why? Do you have any idea why? Okay, I show you. But I guarantee, exam will, uh, will not ask you why. You're not going to get a question ask you, hey, explain why the angle is 30. Why the angle that 30? No, they won't. All right, they won't. But I show you, lah, okay? I show you, lah, okay? How do we get the 30 degrees here? It's because, right, now I bring the kids away first. Huh? The kid blocking me. You, oh, sorry, the kid is broken. I'll put it back. So now you see, we got three forces here, right? Now look, I move them together, one, huh? one set. 
Okay, one sec. We are not gonna even uh, uh, change the directions. So what you simply have to do is just look, look, look. I push them down a bit. Down, 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 down until here. Now you look. Do you realize? Now, and of course, this one, sure, they will fit onto the plane one because they're parallel to it. What is this? What do we have here? Yes, do you see a triangle? Yes, to be more exact, it's a right angle triangle, right? So if this one here, 30, uh, uh, right angle, okay, this is 90 degree. This is 30 degrees. How much here? 90, 30. Uh-huh, 60, right? Uh, we're good, we're good. Then if this one here, 60, what's the angle here? Yep, 30. So that's why, 30 and 30. And why is this 30 here? Because perpendicular, ma. Uh, this one sure 90 one. So 60 minus of 90, 30 degrees. Huh? Get it? Clear? Can. There you go. Okay, now we go back. Huh? So next time, right, whenever they give you the angle on the, they give you angle here, you need to know lah, the angle on the perpendicular side, also 30 degrees. And then now, we can go back to the to the shortcut I taught you just now, right? Look, father open up, become two kids, right? So now what I have, I got two kids, which is the perpendicular and parallel, right? And then look at the angle, look at the force. You realize two of them, also one side got angle, one side no angle, yes? Agree or not? Ah, look here, the parallel side, any angle given? Is there any angle provided? Nope. No angle is what? No angle use what? Sine, cos, tangent. No angle use. Sine, correct. No angle, we do sine. And then here, got angle or not? Is there any angle provided? That is right. There you go. So when there is angle, what do you do? When there is angle, what do you do? Got angle, we use cos. Uh -huh. So now, can you tell me the full answers? Parallel, how to calculate? Now, parallel use sine, correct. And then, uh, sorry, perpendicular use cos. But cannot put the whole, uh, cannot just put sine and cos, right? The whole thing. What did I say? Father name put in front, angle put behind, right? So, parallel answer is what? Who's your father name now? What's your father name now? The father is, wait. So, father sine 30 degree, father cos 30 degree. Do you understand? Hmm? That's how it works. Simple. Right now, inclined plane. Always remember, P become your plane will separate, become 2P. The weight is the father. Father open up, become two children. Parallel, perpendicular. So, father, sine, angle. Father, cos, angle. God, sorry, got angle, use cos, no angle, do sine. Understand? Everybody, okay or not? You don't have to busy copying one, frankly speaking. You can take a screenshot later. I give you the whole page, okay? Relax. Now, it's focus time. And I know, lah, I know uh, uh, for the morning part, I mean, just now you've been through your chemistry, you say my brain want to melt already. I try to uh, take it slow, lah, okay? Got a question you can ask. Okay. Again. Okay, again, again. All right, now, to further enhance you more, you say, hey, I still get a bit confused lah, between the sign and cost. I worry I make a mistake. Now, I give you a very lousy way to remember, lah. Okay, not lousy way, but easy way, lah, okay? Well, look, let's say I have a force that do this, okay? Then when I resolve it, I get a force going up, I get a force going to the right side. Now, if I give the angle here, theta, which one is cos? Fy or fx? Which one is cost? Actually, uh, the, the, the word cost reminded you what, right or not? See, this one is the father. And then, fx is what I'm looking for, right? And, and for fx here, right, is there any angle given? There is angle given, right? Do you see, it? They, they say it's a COS here, cost. Uh, there you go, literally, cost. So, now, and, and look. The name itself, C-O-S. The middle one, it says, uh, got theta, got theta, cos. And then you see the letter, sign, any theta in the middle. Any theta in the middle. No, right? Uh, there you go. No angle, there we do sign. 
then we do sign. We clear? Questions regarding this? So far, so good. Okay, now. Move on. Samo. Okay, we try to do some questions. Huh? Okay, keep listening. Also, a bit boring one. Huh? We try a bit of questions. Huh? Are we done? Mm, you want to take a screenshot or take a screenshot? Later, you, you can copy yourself again. Alright, next. Now you look at notes. Page number 7. Okay. Six questions to settle all. Right, come, come, come. Number 7. Now, regarding this resolution of forces questions. Alright, regarding this resolution of forces questions. right? Uh, very often, right, you get similar questions. One, especially the sign costing. Right, one of the very famous questions they like to ask, right, is, is this one, this kind of question here. Right, the sign cost thing. Yes. Um, what do I mean by that? See, here and here. Usually got two situations they like to ask. Number one is those lawn mover questions. Another type, right, it's about the wheelbarrow questions. Mm. But you know, they serve different purposes, right? Yeah. You know, so they serve different. Never mind. This one question, we wrap everything already. I got a lot more question for you, and then I also got give you the the wheelbarrow question. So one question you do right, you get to cover both lah. Okay. Now, first thing first, do you know what is the function of lawn mover? Do you know what's the function of lawn mover? Cut grass, correct. Now you look at these two diagrams. Uh, what is the difference between them? What is the difference between them? If you look at it properly, you notice one. You will have. Uh, Yes, different method of pushing, correct. Now, one side, right, you are being pushed. And you know, you notice, uh, they don't push straight, you know. They push like diagonal. They push like diagonal, right. Now, the other side, they are pulled, right. So, my question is very simple. Uh, again, resolve first. Lah. Whenever you see diagonal force, you don't cry. The question asks you what. Step one, resolve. Step one, resolve, right. Now, this one, if I resolve, what do I get? This one, if I resolve it, what directions? Are we having down and right? Correct. Now we go faster. Huh? Got problem? Ask. Too fast? Let me know. Okay. But not good enough. What else? Besides resolving, you need to label also ma, the angle. Right. The angle. You see, they put the angle here already. They say this one is 20 degrees. So based on your match, right? If here 20 degrees, may I know which side is the side with angle? May I know which side? The FX side of the FY side. Is the one with angle. Fx. You know why, right? This is a bit of a mat, huh? You know the Z shape? There you go. Pew, pew, pew. Aha. Uh -huh. So, angle here 30. Sorry, 20. Down up here also 20. What about the other side? This one. If I resolve it, what do I get? Directions. Up and right. Correct. Now, the angle is given literally here already. So, no need bother. Lah. Okay, 20 degrees. Settle. Right. Aha, uh -huh. now you compare two of this. What is the difference actually? Which force is the one that is different? Fx or Fy? Which force is actually different? You see, this one I got a force going to the right side, I got a force going down. This one I got a force going right side, I got a force going up. Hey, sorry, Tabali already. This one is Fy, my bad. Okay. Exactly. FY, right? And then you think about it, uh, for a lawn mover, right? Which force is the important force? Which one is more important for a lawn mover? FX or FY? Which one is more important? FX or FY? FY is important. Exactly. Now, this is the one thing that people confuse always. FY is the thing that we concern more. You say, hey, FX not important, man. It's not that important as FY, la, because why? You see, both also got, uh, both uh f x doesn't matter how much as long as you have it then can ready as long as you have it okay now do you do you need f x to be bigger the better kind of thing f x is the force for you to do what push the 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 the, the lawn mover only what right so are you trying to push it very fast doesn't matter right as long as you got f x you manage to push a lot more forward is more than enough. And you think about that, you know, try to recall people cut grass how? Do they push them fast one? They go very slowly, right? Yeah, like, why do you need this force to be crazy big? No point what? You're not trying to raise your neighbor, say, hey, let's see who cut grass faster. Uh, uh, if you win, right, I will cut your grass for one month. No, ma, right? Ultimately, it's actually this one. You're probably thinking, hey, what's with this FYFX? Why do I need this FYFX, right? Sorry, why do I need this up and down force? Okay, now... Look, when you cut grass, uh, 
What do you want? What is your ultimate goal? The more grass you cut, the better, yes or no? Because you don't want to cut already and then tomorrow they grow again, you cut again, they grow again. Uh, cutting grass, right, it's a bit similar to what? It's a bit like, you know, cutting your hair. Okay, so let's see. If I want to cut my hair one time and then I don't have to worry for my hair for another three months, one, what am I supposed to do? If I want to cut my hair and then next three months, next six months, I don't have to worry at all. What do you do? Exactly, bota, right? Now, same thing here. I cut grass. If I want to cut one time uh, for the next month, next two months, next three months, I don't need to cut the grass again. What do I need to do? The more I cut, the better, yes or no. And then now, look at the hand. Uh. Imagine my hand here. My hand here. Now, this is my hand, right? Now, this is the blade. Okay? Now, if your blade is here, you cut. What happened? You only manage to cut this part, right? And then what happened to your grass? Slightly shorter, right or not? And then tomorrow, boof, they come back. But then, if I go all the way down, here I cut, what happened? Literally, whole thing gone, right? And then they will take slow, more time to slowly grow back, yes or no? Exactly. So, how do I make sure the blade go deeper, go deep into the roots of the grass? You pushed the lawnmower down to the earth. Do you understand what I mean? Ah, and based on what I described, what do you think about 6.1 and 6.2? Which one do you think is a better way to cut the grass? Which one do you think is a better way to cut the grass? 6.1, because why? You pushed the lawnmower into the grass, so they will cut more grass. This one, uh, you're literally lifting it up, you know. You're pulling it up. So what happened now, your blade probably going to cut, be, uh, they're going to be different like this. See, this one cut more grass, this one cut lesser. Get it? Mm. Can uh, we try the answer? Now, question number one, I leave it to you. Lah, okay? Definition, this kind of things, uh, you get an answer later, you can copy. I already say definition, memorize only. Lah. No point. Next, draw diagrams of triangle to show the resolution of forces. Now, this is the one thing that I, I need to uh, 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 remind you. Lah. Uh, very often, one in this subtopic, always ask you draw triangle, this triangle, that. Okay, How to draw? Straightforward, you see. Over here, I, uh, we, we actually label the forces already, right? Uh, what you simply have to do is just rearrange these three forces so that they become a triangle rearrange these three forces so they become a triangle now there's always two answers actually because some of you will say can i put it down here it becomes triangle right yes and can i move this over here it also becomes a triangle so you always have two forces i mean two drawings one doesn't matter both also correct both also correct okay but let me cheating a bit okay i put it here for easier for you to see so this is what we have ah, just now right you know the pushing force and then after that, result become Fy, Fx, I'm sorry, Fy and Fx, right? Two of them. Uh, now, I try to keep the angle. So, the angle given was here, right? The 20 degree. So, what I do, right? I'm going to bring this down here. You want to bring the Fy over also can. Either way, lah, doesn't matter. As long as you label the angle correctly. So, what do you have? It's something like this, your triangle. See? Uh -huh. So, we have this one, Fy fx and then this one is your f now why do i put f fy fx are because the question says so see little valley they tell you already the force acting on the handle is f can be resolved into fy fx so they will tell one they will tell one exactly mm. they will tell one so there you go lor. this is your proper drawing get it uh -huh. can i use 70 degree instead uh can but not recommended normally we try to keep the angle given by the question so keep uh, uh 20 here then if you say 20 here, of course I know lah, you can calculate 70, ma, right? Now, this one, look, when they say draw diagram of triangle, just draw like that will do. Okay, aga aga draw is enough. Now, when do you need to properly, uh, like use protractor to measure angle one? Whenever you see them asking you to draw a scale diagram. Uh, you see the word scale diagram, then everything needs to draw properly. You need to measure a force or more. Like, let's say you set 1 cm is 1 newton. So, if it's 10 newton, you draw like a 10 cm line. Yep, only if they say scale diagram. This one, just draw diagram, then just diagram is enough. Okay, just sketched. Just sketched. Understand? Mm. If you get 6.1, I think 6.2 is not a big issue. Lah. So we're going to copy and paste here. Okay, three forces, rearrange them so they become a nice triangle. So this one I bring over, I get a force going up that is called Fy. And then the force going to the right side, Fx. And of course, the angle provided by the questions, 20 degree. And we have a force doing this way, F. Get it?
Mm. Drawing wise, any problems? Are we good? Mm, there you go. You, you want to draw the other shape also can. I mean like, uh, I say already, my right, normally got two types of triangle you can draw. The other way also can. But this is the one I will draw lah because I try to keep the angle there. Mm. And then now, compare. Based on 6.1, 6.2, compare. Now compare is the easiest question you can get in the exam lah, because why? Use your eyeball is enough already. Don't use brain one. Yes, number one, method of moving the lawnmower. over. How do you move the methods? I mean, sorry, compare them. What's the difference between uh, 6.1, 6.2? The method is what? The method is this. Uh, all right. Now, there are cases where sometimes, you know, when you compare questions, they don't give you something that you get to compare. Like you cannot say, oh, this one is bigger than that one. That one is smaller than this one. No. Whenever a question like that, right? Simple. I already said, op compare is observation. So whenever you cannot compare, just tell them what you see. So for this case, right, there's nothing to compare actually. The method, one is pull, one is pushed. So you tell them 6.1 is pushing, 6.2 is pulling. That's it, right? So sometimes, right, you come, you come across a situation like that, uh, that's what you do, okay? So you can tell them uh, the method of moving the lawn mover in diagram 6.1 is pushing and the method of moving the lawn mover in diagram 6.2 is pulling okay mm. now but better to mind now whenever we say compare right you must mention both you know don't just say one or even let's say uh the the answer you get to compare this one bigger than that one then say 6.1 bigger than 6.2 don't just say 6.1 bigger bigger than who ah uh, elaborate some more understand exactly next uh directions of force vertical component Compare lah. This one go where? Down. This one go where? Up. Right. So, what happened? The directions of force in vertical component in diagram 6.1 is downwards and the directions of force in vertical component in diagram 6.2 is upward uh, you following can i mm. answer doesn't part the copy is okay one you get your answer later relax okay i will post it in google classroom and also uh, tdc website the pdf file there you can download okay now number three net force acting upon the ground surface uh, this one can compare you know what means by net force you know why they ask for net force or not look at this diagram can you tell me how many force how many uh, are force acting downwards in this diagram how many force acting downward in this diagram two why two you say hey i thought one only right go on more always there one doesn't matter you pull or push it always there one beside fy what else the force by mother nature uh, which is correct the weight itself my right ah the weight itself see now this one also got you get a weight itself can so what do you do remember just now i said Whenever you only got one dimension, down and down. Same directions. Uh, back to whatever we said just now. Lo. Same direction what we do. Sum them up. Correct. This one here. Opposite directions. What do you do? You minus them. So, think about it. Which one uh, the resultant downward force is more? Which one the resultant downward force is more? Obviously, right? it's like 10 plus 2 versus 10 minus 2. Obviously, right? Ah, so this is why. This is the reason why you choose 6.1 at the first place. Ma. Because you got more force pressing the uh, uh, lawn mower down. Okay? Hmm. So for this case, right? The net force acting upon the ground surface is... Sorry, in diagram 6.1 is greater than diagram 
Always compare. Always compare. Inside your answer must have two answers. Get it? Oh, I get this one thing people ask also. They will say like, hey, my school teacher, right, say uh, I can write diagram 6.1 more than diagram 6.2. Okay, I can write this sign. Is it true? Uh, the answer is yes. But I don't recommend. Because I don't want you all to lose. Uh, uh, yes, la, in SPM, they accept one. The more than, less than sign. But yet, I don't recommend. Like my own personal preference, uh, I prefer you write the whole thing. Yes, I prefer you write the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and, and frankly speaking, la, the extra few words not going to waste you a lot of time, what? Right. Okay? Everybody up to now? All good? Can or not? Now listen, you can copy, but you must know what are you copying. If not, just going to be a bunch of words and calculations, bunch of numbers that you don't understand. So that's the main thing you try to understand before we go on. Can I get a clear from you? Everybody. Next, relate directions of force in FY and the net force acting upon relate direction of force for vertical and the net force acting upon the ground. How to relate? Now, the difference between these two is what? One of them is going down. One of them is going up. And then the result is, which one having a greater downward force? Up or down? Which one is having a greater downward force? 6.1. Why? Because your FY is down. Huh? That's your relate. Huh? Relationship, very simple one. It's just stating the obvious anyway. Okay, so you can say, when the directions of force in vertical component FY is downward the net force acting upon the ground surfaces is greater okay if you push down of course more downward force we have and finally which method more suitable to cut grass effectively just now we say already my right which method is the best Method 6.1 Why is that so? Because Why is that so? Because Exactly The Vertical Component Force is acting Downward Which Results in greater downward force acting upon the ground and the blade can cut deeper into the grass hmm. so mentions about this ah, 6.1 more suitable because why your your vertical component is down therefore more downward force so you get to cut deeper into the grass okay mm. everybody good are you done let me know when you're done All right. If you touch some part, screenshot or get the answer later. Next, we have view barrel. Now, you need to understand, not one concept applies to all. So, see, when we say view barrel, right? Uh, what's this for? What's this for? To carry, you know, all your heavy stuff load now, okay? And then, same thing also. You are going to push, you, will, you are going to either push the view barrel or you either gonna pull the wheelbarrow, right? Now, same logic also, ah. Uh, when you pushed it, when you pushed it, your force gonna go down this way, right? When you pull it, they're gonna go down, they're gonna go up this way. So, the idea is when you push it, right, your force is down and forward. 
when you pull it your force is up and to the left right so again where, what do we pay attention to this one here now smart guess before i tell you the answers would you pushed would you think push is is better or pull is better which one is better in uh, for wheelbarrow pushing it or pulling it now that you have to think about this okay we, we try to go step by step lah, okay i try to guide you how you think step one think about it where do you use this thing where are you going to use a wheelbarrow where do you need a wheelbarrow do you bring a wheelbarrow to shopping to like shopping mall to hypermarkets you don't right where do you use it where do you where do you use this thing construction site yes farm right or not farming gardening ah uh, then start thinking about this all the thing we mentioned just now construction site uh, farm all kind of right what is the conditions of the ground rough is not the main point no 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 not not rough yes they are muddy what means by muddy it's soft you know what happened when you push something really heavy on the muddy road they go inside they sink into the mud correct now so what happened next if you sink into the mud you get stuck ah, right uh, so which way it's actually better to prevent your wheelbarrow from getting stuck from getting sink inside now you better in mind sink is going this way one so what you want you don't want it to sink all right you don't want it to sink what do you do apply a force that goes opposite so actually pulling is better one now this one involve i i, I tell you also like, okay this one right involve it involve a bit of uh chapter two also okay your your pressure a bit lonely like, okay um you know what's the biggest problem for for wheelbarrow wheelbarrow got one of this problem is here they only have one wheel what's wrong with having one wheel your area very small and you know this will lead to what when you got a small area they will create a huge pressure causing the wheel to stuck inside now never mind I remind you a bit huh? do you know how we calculate pressure we take force over area understand ah now since you cannot change the area man let's just say we assume this one constant what do you want do you want more pressure or less pressure acting on the ground more pressure means they will stuck they will sink less pressure means exactly if you want this one lesser now this one you don't even need to know the formulas right or not simple math this is a fractions if this one go down what happened to this one you want the force to be more or less how do you have less force how do you have less force have a force that go up so it will cancel off not to cancel off like so it will reduce the weight that goes down understand hmm, there you go so now could you tell me which method is the best we got klm choose one uh now pushed pull push push pull first thing first you want push or pull pull okay good then why got people choose k1 i don't get it you should choose the l right uh -huh. some more next one the size of tire three marks are of course right uh bigger better so what's the final answer e okay you know why size of tire bigger again back to this idea what right now beside force what else can we do pressure is force over area let's just say assume now we got same force huh? what happened you want lesser pressure your area is supposed to be big or small how to big big tire lah right uh so final answer both fulfill criteria should be l got it now we go back over here there you go okay method to move wheelbarrow step one what do you see here method to move wheelbarrow method to move wheelbarrow how okay the method to move wheelbarrow should be pulling okay or you can say i uh, should be pull lah. right why is that so because the vertical component force acting upward will reduce the total downward force acting on the 
ground okay second size of tire how the size of tire should be bigger why larger surface area will reduce pressure acting on the ground and prevent the wheel barrel from sinking into the muddy road muddy ground therefore the most suitable is l uh, i get this question a lot and why uh, everybody push the wheel barrel um for convenient purposes lah. Mm. so that's why right because when you pull from the back right it's actually very hard like like not so comfortable for for our human um, uh, posture one but of course physics wise pulling is better lah. so that's why right you know what they do they want to push but they don't want to sink inside that's why you notice right on on those like you know uh, muddy road or maybe like construction site they put a lot of wooden plank wooden plank uh, because uh, when you put wooden plank your area in contact go from this become the area of the of the whole plank uh, so that's what they do lah, to increase the area so that they can still push it because it is more comfortable for them to push uh, but of course we say more effective is to put it okay we good hmm. next beside characteristics mentions above um suggest another characteristics of the material that is also important now here you pay attention uh, they want characteristics of the material so you cannot give other reason like you know uh, we have more wheels no characteristics of the material as in what what is the material you're supposed to use to in making this uh, view barrel now again whenever you see material you try avoid saying you want exactly what material like you tell them oh i want alloy i want uh, uh, aluminium i want steel don't describe the characteristics and now there's one of this very important one first thing first the most important thing is what this wheelbarrow is for you to carry stuff right so when you're making the material most important is what it needs to be light because it's already heavy can you put in more things or not you want to carry you mean you want to use your force in in actually carrying the the, the load rather than carrying the wheelbarrow right imagine the wheelbarrow like the wheelbarrow like super heavy uh, then how much thing you can put inside already heavy get it uh -huh. so how do we say lightweight in physics we got this particular term very often we use what right how do you say lightweight yes 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 every time say like you want to say heavy light uh, don't say heavy and light you know make it more scientific says what low density okay material should be low density why low density uh, then you further elaborate because so that so that the wheelbarrow is lighter and further elaborate why you want it to be lighter easier to be carry can fit more load also can if you want to say can fit more load now beside low density what else can we say got one thing also and if, now why do you want it to be metal why don't we make the view barrel as a plastic because they are, you want it to be hard you want it to be strong right ah how do you say this now durable is a bad word to use always remember don't use durable like your understanding of durable and my understanding of durable may be different right now your tahan lama is can last forever my tahan lama maybe just last for three months i already have been very happy right now i give you one word you can learn ah. okay material should have high rigidity uh, you know what's, what's the meaning of the word rigid like very strong sturdy uh, use this word uh -huh. why you want it to be rigid so that the wheelbarrow is stronger and does not break easily because you're gonna throw the the the, the wheelbarrow everywhere right jump up here jump up here throw here throw there right uh, there we go so high rigidity anything else got one more also actually can say not so relevant but yes can say also ah, okay some of you tell me the material should be steel why steel at the first place why not iron yes you don't want them to rust how to say one rust 
Chemistry 101. What do you call the process of rusting? What do you call the process of rusting? Uh, chemistry, chemistry. Oxidize, correct. Oxidation. So, the material should have low rate of oxidations. Resistance to corrosion, resistance to rusting also can. Uh, but we normally just say low rate of oxidation. So that the wheel barrel does not rust easily. They want one point. I give you three points more than enough. Uh. In exam, please write one is enough. Don't spam. Write one enough. Understand? There you go. So with this, we wrap up all the... Uh, uh, all the questions they will ask you like wheelbarrow, uh, 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 lawnmower, whatsoever. Okay. Are you done? Because I need to move on a bit more. Mm. Question wise, you can do yourself. But most importantly is you must know everything uh, before you can actually do the questions, right? So you see, I notice I focus on to you know explaining everything and then mentioning all the things that you 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 have problem with. Uh, that's why. Are we good? Can we go on? Take shot. Five, four, three, two, one. Now back to page number six. Back to page number six. So after we have inclined plane, what's next? After we have inclined plane, what's next? The second thing, which perhaps uh, is the one that, you know, kills everybody. Lah. Right. Which is what? Now, the application for all your sine cost tangent, beside inclined plane, right, there's one thing that often people confuse. You say, I listen to, to, to teacher, I cannot understand what at all. I look at a book, I cannot understand what it says. Remember this equilibrium of forces? The keyword is what, actually? This. When I say equilibrium, means what? The word equilibrium come from what? Or like originate from what words? The word equilibrium originates from what word? Equal, correct. Well, equilibrium leh, very simple one. Okay, make it this way lah. Uh, got two way of solving. I go straight forward to you. Got two way of solving. What are the two ways we have? Either you do calculations or you do drawings. Okay, either you do calculations or you do drawings. Okay, now drawing means scale diagram ah. Like literally, you're going to draw a proper triangle with everything measured properly, with compass, with angle measured properly one. Okay, so this one, to be quite frankly, uh, chances of coming is quite low lah, because normally exam don't like to ask scale diagram. Cost too many marks and yet too easy to do. But anyway, the notes I gave you inside got methods to draw one. You can follow a bit. All right, what I want to focus on to lah is the one that normally asks a lot in exam, calculation. Now calculation, I offer you two ways. Yes, okay. First way, it's cross method. I got two methods for you. Huh? Now, with these two methods, you can solve all questions already. Okay, first way is cross method. Okay, second way is triangle method. Yes, one by one. Huh? Okay, now cross method more important because now cross method is universal. Triangle method, it's, it's fast but restricted, limited. So we will see. Huh? Now, uh, random questions will do. Imagine, um, I think the notes inside got also. I got one question for you. Ah, there we go. See? Ah, this one. But later lah. This one easy. I can do it later for you. Or you can try doing later yourself lah. Okay? Now, imagine this. Let's say now I have a pot of flower. Okay? Pot of flower lah, okay? Flower pot, flower pot, flower pot. Sorry, I'm drawing a bit lousy lah, okay? There's a reason why I teach physics lah. Uh, flower pot. Doop, 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 doop. Okay? Uh, flower. Hmm. Uh, this okay now what I do uh, I decided to hang this flower up on a rope so I have uh, this rope here oh, this one this one okay uh -huh. now first thing first this kind of equilibrium questions right they ask one thing anyone they will ask you to calculate tension okay how do we do that first thing do you know what means by tensions do you know what's the meaning of tensions? Tensions only happens in one places. Tension only occurs in one places. On the rope, exactly. Okay, now, and then tension is very simple. One, uh, it's, it's opposite to your force applied. Yes, so if you pull down, your tension go up. Now, just imagine this way. Imagine you have a rope. Doesn't matter elastic or not. Not even rubber band. Just a rope. If you pull it really tight, 
What happens if you cut the rope? Like just pull tight and then you cut. What happened to the rope on top? They will kind of like bounce back up a bit, right? They go like up a bit. Ah, then now, not even rubber band. Nah, they do that one. Why? Because you got tensions. So when you pull down, your tension goes up. When you pull left, your tension goes right. Get it? Okay. Mm. Now, first, of course, they will tell you one thing. There is always this one force. What is it? Before we go for tension whatsoever, look at this diagram. One force. What was it? Again, no matter you put it on a rope, you put it on the floor, you whatever lah. There's always, there's always, always this one force. Yep. Which is what? There's always this one force going down. Correct. What do you call that? Yep. Wait. Ah, uh, now I make it easy for you. Ah, uh, I tell you lah. Okay. The weight here equals to. Okay. The weight here equals to uh, say twenty newton lah. Uh, easy for you to calculate. Normally they will tell you the mass. You have to calculate yourself. They will say like the mass is 2kg, 1kg, 5kg, whatever, you convert. But now I tell you straight away, it's 20 degrees. And then after that, right, this one here, 60 degree. Uh, no lah, random number, easier, 45 degree. Okay, this one also, 45 degree. Right, now you see rope here, you see rope here? Tensions, what directions? Think about it, when your weight pulling down, what do you think the weight, What, what do you, where, where do you think the tensions will go to? I see just now, alright, if I pull down, Tension goes up, correct. So we have here tensions, we have here tensions. Ah, then we start solving these kind of questions. How do we do that? Well, step one. Now, I'm going to show you the usual way, like the universal way first. I already said we got two ways to solve questions. One is cross method. We use it all the time because cross method is very important. How do we do cross method? Okay, now, you know why is it called cross method or not? Because literally you draw across. Yep. I ask you a question, uh, normally in exam, right? When you don't know what to do, uh, whenever you get stuck, like especially let's say this kind of question comes in exam, you probably get stuck, right? So when you don't know what to do that time, what do you do? When you're facing a question that you cannot do, what do you do? Step one, what do you do? Uh, now, you, you say like, oh, uh, I try, no? or I know, la, skip is later on. Uh. Step one, what do you do? You ask your friend first one, normally, right? Or not? Uh, you will turn your head 45 degree or like literally just 90 degree and then you ask him like you know hey how to do this then next moment what happened your friend will turn over and tell you i also don't know then how mm. this is when the next steps come you will start praying you will start praying say hey please uh, let me pass uh. i know lah uh, okay i never study it's my bad uh. the whole holiday i'm dreaming all the way i watch drama I'm sorry about it. Please let me pass. Uh, so you do this also in exam. Uh, what you do, uh, step one, you draw a cross. Like this. Okay. Now, before I continue, everybody, before I continue, it's just a solving method. Okay. I'm not trying to convert you. I'm not trying to promote any religion. Okay. Relax. Chill. Please don't get angry or offended. All right. Now, why? What's with the cross actually? Of course not for you to pray on, right? What do you do? Your diagram very complicated, right? So what's next? We move everything one by one over. Okay, we move everything one by one over. You see, we got this force here, right? Mm. Now one rule, uh, whenever you're moving the force, right? Your force must come out from the center of the... Must come out from the center of the cross. As in like, you know, from here, middle point, everything out. Okay, now same thing. This one, right? Where do I put it? I will put it over here. I'm not going to put it over here because this one goes inside already. I want it put outside here. Okay, this one going up and then I call this one as tension. Oh, by the way, the weight when you copy over, 20 Newton. Right. Now, same thing also. This one I'm going to copy over and then I put it here. Right. Uh, so, this is the reason of drawing a cross. Okay, to make it diagram easier to see, easier to soft. Follow this way. Can I? Now, what else? You also need to bring all the angle one by one, right? Aha, uh -huh. now 45, meaning what? Z shape again, my right? So that being said, this one also 45 degree. Okay, this one also 45 degree. Follow? Okay, now step one, settle. I mean, no, sorry, not yet. Step one, remind you first what we do. We draw a cross. Okay, now why do we draw a cross? Because you want to shift all your forces over and next step, you know what you do or not? You start to resolve them. Because I say already, my right? Whenever we have a force that is diagonal, you resolve. You don't care what the question asks you. Diagonal means resolve. Diagonal means resolve. Understand? Now, 
This one, if I resolve, where do I go? What directions? This one, if I resolve, open up the, the, the chopstick, open up. We get a force going up and a force going to the right side, correct. Okay, we get a force going up and a force going to the right side. Now, what about the other side here? What about the other side? Here, if I resolve, what do I get? I get a force going up and I get a force going to the right side. Now, you notice, right, I use different color because I don't want you to get confused. Yes, now, look here. Do you see two force going up? Okay, some people think uh, they are just one force, you know. They say, oh, are they the same? No, you see, the orange one, right, who's the father? This guy. And then the green one, right, who's the father? This one. So they're coming from different father one. Yes, just so happened they're both going up. And of course, what did I say before? If you have a two force that is both going the same way, what do you do? Yes, you sum them up. Understand? This one, everything plus together. Uh, what about this two here? Opposite, uh, then you minus. Get it? Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, we resolve first. So step one setter, we resolve. Okay, I label name easier for you to call. Uh, okay, F1, F2, F3, F4. Okay, so step one, draw cross, resolve. Settle. Right, what's the second step we do? Uh, then you, now you pray. How to pray? Uh? Now, have you seen how Catholic pray before? Like Catholic people, Catholic religion. Ah, uh, now they, they do this. Okay, uh, again, uh, I'm not trying to promote you, uh, relax, okay? I'm not trying to convert you. Just look here. They do this. Okay, up, down, left, right. Up, down, left, right. While you do this right, you mention this word. Up equals to down, left equals to right. Exactly. So this is a reminder. Every time you start, you just do this. Up, down, left, right. Ah, there you go. Okay. So it means what? Now, you know why is it called equilibrium or not? Because all your force equal. But of course, not like everything equal. Lah. So up equals to down, left equals to right. So that is the meaning of equilibrium. You understand? There you go. Okay. Now, look, one by one. Lah, okay. Look at the diagram and tell me, right, which force is going up? Up. Got how many force? Got two, right? What do you do when you got two force? Sum them up. Yes, F2, F3, plus together, equals to? Down is 20. Correct. Okay. Huh? Now, what happened to left and right? What happened to left and right? Left side, F1. Okay. Right side, F4. Yeah, we go. Okay. Mm, then you got two equations here, right? Choose one. Which equation is the one that you're probably going to use? First or second? Of course, the, sec the first one. Ah. Some of you say, oh, wait, why not the second one? Second one easier, what? Right? Second one, uh, I don't have to calculate so many things. Right? F1 equals F4. But you know what's the problem or not? They're too simple. Right? See? You, do you know the value for F1? You don't. Do you know the value for F4? You don't. Don't know equals to don't know. What's the answer? Don't know. Uh -huh. So of course, look for what? Look for equation with number. Like imagine I tell you A plus B is 20. At least you can calculate, right? But if I say A plus B equals to C, how to, how to, how to, how to calculate? So of course, not like always we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna solve First questions, not not like always we will use the up equals down, can be left equals right as well. But choose the equation with number. Choose the equation with number. Understand? Ah, so that's the trick. So from here, right, we choose this one. Finally, what do you do? Solve the equation. Because why? You need to understand one trick. Huh? You're not trying to, you're not trying to calculate F2, F3, you know. Ultimately, what are you calculating? The tensions. But you ask yourself, lah, where... Do I get this F2, F3 at the first place? F3, the father is from here, ma. F3, the father is this guy, what, right or not? And then you see this guy is tension. This guy is tension. So we change the name. F3, sorry, F2 is what? F2 from here. Now go back to the basic skills again. Look at F2. Look at tensions. 
any angle between any angle between in between no angle use what no angle use what sign correct okay now then you look at f3 this one any angle no angle use what sign also right there you go so that's why right we substitute inside f2 is what father sign angle f3 is what father sign angle now same angle right then you lucky lah and usually they be same angle one because why now you can sum them up right t sign 45 plus t sign 45 what do we get t sign 45 plus t sign 45 2t hey the angle don't add up one ah uh, a plus a is 2a so 2t sign 45 equals to 20 now this one two you bring over divide divide you get 10 so what do we get for t t equals to 10 divided by sine 45 and then you get answer how much do we get 10 over sine 45 press calculator 14.14 correct there you go this is how we do it for cross method okay three steps first draw cross resolve your force second pray okay up equals the down left equals the right third solve your questions by adding in your father name inside okay father is tension then tension sign 45 all right so easy as one two three cross method any questions about mm. both straight so both straight yes now when we say 14.14 meaning ah. Uh, this one is 14.14, here also 14.14, both also, they don't divide to one, you already divided to two, you already divided two here, yes, so it's 14.14 for each, 14.14 for each, get it? Hmm. We good? Can okay, I, can okay. I uh, wrap it up a bit more, because I need to make sure you can solve both, uh. Uh, triangle method also, can we, can we? I know, I know, we we having time soon, but, 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 but. let me finish, uh, you know. At least you go back with a complete knowledge, ma. Right. Okay, now, let me finish up the next part. Uh. Uh, your, okay, first thing, right, can you look at your notes, page number three also? Page three. Page three. Uh, one thing you have me to change. Page three. You see this diagram here? It says 60 Newton, right? And then 6 kg, right? Now, your new syllabus no longer times 10 one, actually. So what I want you to do, right? Take away the 6 kg. Yes, I want to make it easy for you. So I tell you straight away, the weight is 60 Newton. So obviously your mass is not 6 kg. All right, so this one also changed. Okay, 60 Newton weight. Yes, 60 Newton weight. Now we take these questions to solve, to, uh, to show you uh, the triangle method. Okay. Now, uh, I got more space here, I can put here. Let me shrink a bit more. Ui. Okay, this is your questions, right? And then, I already said we don't care about the, the, the 6 kg anymore. Now, how to know we can use triangle method or not? When you look at our force, right, you see, here also we got T1, T2 and W, right? And then you notice here, they put T1, T2. Where on the other side, right, they put T only. Now, listen, uh, if your angle is the same, then no need T1, T2. Because angle same, tension same. But when your angle here, are they the same or not? This is flat, you know. Ah, then there will be T1, T2. Because why? They will be different. When your angle is different, your tension, be diff uh, your tension will be different. Understand? Okay. Now, from this, right, these are the typical questions. This one, I will recommend we do triangle method. Why? You look at the three forces. Can you form a right angle triangle with these three forces or not? How to know? Simple. Either two of them. Okay? Two of them. As long as your two forces manage to form an angle of 90 degree, then you can use triangle method. Okay? Uh? Uh, so, you can see this T2 and W is 90, right? So yes, we could. So what we're going to do, step one, we rearrange the forces. Now, never change the directions, only rearrange. Make sure they look like a triangle. 
make sure they become a triangle. So what we have here, we got W, okay, then we got T2, and then we also have T1, okay, three of them are, all right, this one is T1, see, T1, T1, T2, T2, and then weight, and then weight. Now, this one you pay attention. When you arrange the triangle, right, you make sure one thing, the force cannot clash. What means by that, uh, look, you cannot do this because, see, they are clashing each other already. Yep. So instead of that, you put it over here. Okay? You put it over here. And then this one, finally, we put it over here. You follow? So let's see. How to know they clash or not? Simple. The arrow can flow one way fully one. Yep. And then after that, here, 60, 90 degree, T2, and T1. Somehow you know the angle here is 50 degrees, right? Now, the rest, easy. Why? I suppose you learn your trigger geometry, yes or no? You got your theta here, right? You got your theta here. What do you call the, the side facing the angle again? What's this? What's this? Your weight is actually 60 Newton, right? This one is your opposite. What's T2? T2 is adjacent, right? What's T1? Hypotenuse. So you want to find one by one? Simple, ah. Uh. Let's say I want to find T1. I got opposite. So I will do sine theta equals to opposite over hypotenuse. Sine 50 degree equals to 60 over T2. Then you get answers. And then if I want to find T2. Sorry, just now T1, my bad. T2 is adjacent. And then I also got opposite. So now I'm going to do tangent theta equals to opposite over adjacent. Tangent 50 equals to 60 over T2. And then you can find T2. Aha. Uh -huh. Now this will be real quick because why? Your force can form a right angle triangle. So again now, we got two methods. Cross method universal. Triangle fast. This one can solve a lot of questions. All the questions actually. But they are more lengthy. This one right, faster but they are restricted. Only can solve it when your force can form a right angle triangle. Now, I know what you're thinking. Somebody say, hey, actually, triangle, must it, must it be right angle triangle? Mm, let's just say they are not 90 degree. They are not right angle triangle. I can also solve it, what? right or not? You learn your MATS. You know, you got your cosine rule, your sine rule thing. Yes, you could, but normally I don't recommend because why? Normally, those not right angle one, ah, I will ask you to do cross method. In a way, they are easier. Of course, you say, oh, my MATS is very good one. Then go ahead. I'm not stopping you. You can use your MATS cosine rule, cos rule, whatever, lah to solve answers. Yes, but normally my recommendations, not right angle, use cross. Right angle, use triangle. And in fact, you know these flower pot questions, can we actually use triangle method? Think, can we, use tri uh, can we actually use triangle method? You see, uh, if here is 45, here is 45, this one also, 45 right, here also, 45 right, 45, 45, agree, what's the angle here, now this one draw already, 45, 45, do you know what's the angle here, 45, 45, what's the angle here, you realize they are 90 right, Ah, so actually this flower pot question also can try triangle. Get it? So far so good? Okay, one more thing that everybody confuses so I clarified this then we, we, we started already. Regarding triangle, uh, actually right, you realize we got two triangle questions, right? Well, uh, uh, and then I said what? The, and the thing I emphasize is what? Whenever you join triangle, your force cannot clash. Your force cannot clash, right? Then you're gonna ask me, hey, why this one can clash one? Uh? You see? Isn't this clashing? Uh, so this is the one thing that normally people get stuck with, so I remind you lah. Because we are talking about two different situations here. Alright, so why why we have like different situations here? Okay, like just now we were saying, my right, how come uh, uh one sometimes can clash, sometimes cannot clash, right or not? So to do that, very simple one, okay? Because we are talking about two different situations here. This one, right, it's just to calculate resolution of forces, okay? Resolution means what? Fy, Fx, 
combine become resultant. This one no equilibrium one. This one the object will move one. You're moving it, right or not? You're causing them to move, right? Uh -huh. So that's why uh, here for resolution forces, you only got two force actually. Two of them combine become this. You get it? Combine become this. Okay? Now, whereas right, for equilibrium, you originally already got three force. You got this one, you got this one, you got this one. They all mixed up, mixed up, mixed up. They just so happen cancel off all your forces. Your net force balance nicely, your net force zero. Okay? So that's why, right? Why sometimes the triangle can clash. Sometimes the triangle cannot clash because we are talking about two different situations. This one is like your MX. You know, like you're drawing your, 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 your vector diagram kind of thing. Okay? It's like you're drawing your vector diagram kind of thing. Right? So, you see, you start from here. You draw your Fy, you draw your Fx, and then you end it here. So obviously, when we draw vector diagram, how? We start, we end, we draw one straight line. This is the result of Fy, Fx together. But over here, right, your T1, your T2, all right, and then W, they cancel each other. That's why your net force zero. Getting it? Ah, so that's why regarding triangle drawing, right? Regarding triangle drawing, ah, let me make it this way. You have two situations. It's talking about two different things totally. One is resolution of forces. One is uh, uh, um, your equilibrium of forces. Okay? Resolution of forces, normally what happens? It only consists of two forces. And then they, they combine together. Okay? Two of them are combined, become resultant. Whereas, right, for equilibrium, what happens? is the fact that you got three forces. They cancel out each other. Where they result in your net force equals zero Newton. Ah, so that is the difference where we having here. You understand now? Exactly. So for equilibrium of forces, sorry, for resolution of forces, right? You draw like a vector diagram. So this one, they can clash. Whereas, right, for equilibrium, because you're trying to cancel everything, you want that for zero. That's why they cannot clash. Only equilibrium one cannot clash. Now you get it. Okay. So far? Okay or not? Everybody? Can. Can. We good? Ah, so that's a trick. Okay. Yeah. Now. Perhaps uh, you will ask what's with this. Uh? I, I further last part a bit, okay? So uh, now for this one, uh, for example, this one, right? You see your T1, T2? Let me ask you a question. When you have a force, your T1, oh, sorry. Perhaps I draw nicely again, uh, okay? You see these three forces here? Can you tell me, right? These two force combined together, right, become what directions? T2, W, if you combine them together, what do you get? You get a force doing this, right? So this is the result of T2 plus W, right? And then now you see if I bring the T1 over, do you realize the T1 and your resultant of the T2W literally cancel out? Now you get the concept? This is why they doesn't clash. I mean, sorry, this one, this is why they cannot clash. It's these two combo become this and then put a T1 there, cancel off. So this one gone already, gone already, and then gone already. This is what means by equilibrium. All your forces cancel out. Okay. Ah, so reminder here, resolution, two force combined, can clash. Equilibrium, three force cancel out, cannot clash. Okay? Alright now, is there any questions everybody like to ask? I will stay for a while after the class. But uh, meanwhile, I hope today you actually learn something and benefit you lah, okay? Alright, that's it for today. Okay, I know it's late a bit. Sorry about that. Bye-bye!